everyone and welcome to the weekly World of Darkness new stream in the month of darkness in which we are uh, celebrating a lot of new reveals and unlocks every single day. And today we are celebrating uh, the ongoing campaign of Vampire the Masquerade War of Ages, the Mind Ice Theater LARP book, which is coming as a first official LARP book for Vampire the Masquerade V5. And we're going to have a special guest, Johanna Peterson, who is going to join us to talk about his writing on the book. In fact, I'm going to join him on the interview right now and uh, see if he's waiting for us. Let's see. Hello, hello, Johanna. Nice to see you. <laughs> Hello, good to see you too. Good to see you. I'm so happy to see you there, um, especially as, uh, well, I told you that before, but I'm a huge fan after your work for Camarilla and Anarch books, uh, especially after the wonderful parts of the Camarilla books in which you uh, wrote as Victoria Ash. That was absolutely amazing. <laughs> and, Thank you. And now... I, I think those yeah. were my favorite parts of, of almost all of that work to write. That's amazing. We're definitely going to go back to it and ask you about it in detail. But uh, today we are here to, of course, celebrate and talk more about uh, Vampire the Masquerade War of Ages. But let's go back to the very beginning. Could you let us know, maybe at first, something about yourself that you want to introduce yourself by to our community? Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a very long time role player and a very long time LARP, LARPer. Like uh, I played my first role-playing games in the very, very early, early 90s as a child playing Dungeons and Dragons with friends. And then I started LARPing a little bit later, a few years later, when I got a little bit older also. And when LARP, uh, so this was in the, in the early years of LARP in Finland. So the same scene was developing very fast and it was still quite young when I started also. Mm -hmm. And uh, as your new book is about LARPs, I'm wondering, um, were you also a LARPer back in the days? And how did your adventure with LARPing start? <laughs> it's a very, it's a very geeky story. Okay. Is this story. Uh, I was 15 years old and uh, I belonged to like a Star Trek uh, fan club because a uh, new Star Trek series didn't come to television in Finland. So we had this club where we watched them together, like on a video projector. Somebody was like taping them in the US and then sending, sending them to Finland. <laughs> and, uh, and then one day uh, I saw on the television a documentary about Vampire LARP. Like, uh, and I was like, like, I was already a role player and I had already read uh, Vampire the Masquerade, the book. So I, I knew what this was. And then I saw the documentary, I thought like, wow, like amazing, you can do this for real. And not only that, but I recognized some of the people in the documentary oh. because it was a Finnish documentary and there were people in the same Star Trek club as where <laughs> I was. And I thought like, okay, this looks so cool. This looks so amazing that I immediately have to, I, I got to be part of this. So when then the next kind of like a video night, and this was quite a big club, we had like a dozens of people there in, in an auditorium when it came up i uh, gathered my 15 year old courage and uh, went to the front where all these slightly older people who were like maybe 80 <laughs> <laughs> so a lot older than me and uh, where they were sitting and i introduced myself and i said like i want to get in on this uh i want to get in on this thing that this sounds super cool and uh that's how i ended up there and then I played for a few years and then uh, like, you know, it was uh, like a Helsinki based uh, chronicle that lasted many years. And then a few years later, I was into, uh, kind of invited to be part of the storyteller team mm -hmm. for that chronicle. That's great. And do you recall any um, memorable character that you played during these LARPs? Maybe your first character that you played in the Vampire the Masquerade LARP? <laughs> The first character I played was, uh, I have to admit, slightly ridiculous. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you have to remember that uh, this story starts in the mid 90s. By the way, the Chronicle had an age limit of 16, so I had to lie my age to get in. <laughs> wow. Horrible <laughs> criminal beginnings. You rebel. But, uh, also, the story started at the Star Trek fan club. So when I said that I want to get in on this thing, they asked me like, uh, like, like that's okay, but we have a specific character in mind that would that be okay to you? 
And the character they proposed was a, a Malkavian who had a Star Trek based delusion. <laughs> okay. There was kind of a fashion for quite bizarre Malkavian characters in the 90s. And uh, that's what I started with. <laughs> what was the Star that Trek the delusion? Of this journey. What was the Star Trek delusion like uh, portrayed as? Did you think that the world is Star Trek? Or <laughs> what was the situation there? I, I was on an undercover away mission, mm-hmm. and then I and then after each LARP, I wrote my kind of like after LARP reports that uh, the organizer asked asked us to write, so they knew what was happening in the LARP, what's happening in the Chronicle, and I wrote those as kind of like a pastiche of the Star Trek style of writing like a captain's log and blah blah blah. That sounds like a really inspiring start. And, uh, well, it's uh, somehow, we know, the destiny uh, went from there to you writing for official Vampire the Masquerade books and also writing for official Vampire the Masquerade LARP book, War of Ages, which is currently on Kickstarter in a campaign funded in under eight hours from a writer member. So congratulations, uh, first of all. Thank and uh, now can you tell us a little bit more what exactly is War of Ages and who is this book for? Uh, War of Ages, like what what I see this as is that, um, like I think when we look at making vampire LARPs and playing vampire LARPs, there's um, especially, I think especially with, like not with all LARPs, but specifically with vampire LARP, I think there's two kinds of like uh, uh, th- things that people consider. One of them is the actual play and the, uh, and things like, uh, like how do, how do you set up these events? Mm-hmm. And the other one is uh, game mechanics. And Mindside Theater has like a whole very distinguished tradition that has been going on for decades at this point and a lot of uh, wonderful thinking about how to make all of those things work in terms of game mechanics. And I thought that uh, that's not what we're doing here. That's the other thing we're doing here. So what we're looking at here is is the play experience in terms of like uh, of like what kind of a world is your character entering? Mm-hmm. That's that's the core question for the players. The idea is that uh, as a player, when you read the book, you get an idea of what is the world of vampire, uh, what kind of things your character knows and understands, and what and most especially what kind of conflicts are inherent in the setting of vampire yes. that make for great LARP. And then from organizer perspective, it is like how do you set up all those conflicts and all of those things uh, so, so that it inherently generates uh, fun play. So there's stuff like uh, ready-made large scenarios and ideas for chronicles and uh, this kind of concrete uh, story stuff that you can just use and uh, production ideas and uh, also an, an, uh, two appendices, one which is about like uh, Nordic LARP techniques and the other one is about uh, like a remote vampire play like on Discord and uh, other online platforms. So that's that's the sort of the... The, what it is and the reason it's called war of ages is because like the th- people who organize vampire LARPs are blessed by the fact that the setting contains such wonderful structure that generates good LARP design like uh, if you put Toreador and the Bruja in a room that's already something is happening there. Mm-hmm, of course <laughs> and, and that's wonderful because that makes everybody's job so much easier even the players have it easier because they know what's happening and the war of ages is the biggest conflict there is in vampire and that's why also it's the concept or it's the leading concept of the book the fight of uh, young vampires who want to establish themselves and uh, who want power but also just survival and respect and then uh, older vampires who are hell bent on holding on to every little scrap of privilege they managed to accumulate through the ages. That's great. And there is um, the mention uh, f- throughout this campaign about the so called Nordic style of role playing. Uh, could you explain what exactly this means to people who maybe do not know LARPs enough to know uh, what does it contain? Yeah, that's sort of my uh, personally, my kind of home style i mm-hmm. guess uh, so nordic larp is uh, is like a larp style that's been developed as the name suggests in the nordics in the last uh, 20 years and uh, and what it does is that it emphasizes uh, collaboration mm-hmm. uh, 
collaborative, very drama-based, uh, very emotion-based play. So the idea is to have these cool, uh, cool dramatic scenes and uh, and uh, stories that you can experience as a character. And uh, uh, personally, I think of think of it that there's many LARP styles around the world. Uh, this is one of them. All of them can produce absolutely great LARPs. But this is the one where I know how to explain how it works. Mm -hmm. So that's why also we felt that uh, it's a good idea to put that at the end of the book in one of the appendices to just explain how those ideas work and how they are. And personally, I see Nordic LARP as a sort of a toolbox. Like, uh, I am not super interested in going to somebody who is running a vampire chronicle and telling them that you must now start using this template. This is the only way to do it. Yes. No, that doesn't work. Because the people who are out there on the ground doing uh, their own chronicles, they know best what works for their players and what they find interesting. And I think what for me is the best way to do this is that they themselves look at the tools and say, aha, this is useful, I will use this. Or better yet, this is useful, but it would work better if I changed it a little bit, thus creating a new tool and mm -hmm. creating more uh, development in the world of LARP. I'm very interested in to see your description of um, Nordic style role playing in this book, but uh, without spoiling too much, of course, we don't want to spoil the whole book in here. Uh, which parts of the book, or which part of the book in particular, did you feel most invested in writing? <laughs> well, there's two answers to that question because uh, there's a there is a the serious LARP designer answer, and then there is the personal answer. Mm -hmm. The serious LARP designer answer is that I like writing all the kind of the design stuff, mm -hmm. like the how to how to how to make these things and how to break down, like how to use vampire effectively and all that stuff, and that's in there. But just personally, purely personally, I made it a point to write some more Victoria Ash stuff yes. <laughs> because I love writing her and uh, and I thought that uh, since I have a chance to do it again I will do it again <laughs> wonderful I did read uh, your blog uh, that you, you wrote recently about writing Victoria Ash but what is it about Victoria that makes her so fun to write for you I like writing that sort of like uh uh, aristocratic, super entitled, but very dynamic uh, women. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, it just, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know where it comes from. It comes from somewhere. Uh, one characteristic I, I, I especially like about Victoria Ash is the, uh, is the fact that if you look at what her kind of like personal story is, it's not that she was born to great wealth and privilege. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. Instead, she has quite a, quite a sordid backstory uh, of poverty. But, uh, but what she did what, was that she kind of created herself. And, uh, and in, her, in, in her story, this is not even like, it, it's not, not even like a dirty secret. This is a thing that is known. But still, if you, if you create yourself successfully enough, you can create a story that people will believe in, even if they know that that you just made it. <laughs> that's, that's great. And, and I like that. I, I like I like that. Uh, I like that. I, I think that also is kind of like timely now. I, I think it's appropriate to have uh, characters who have made themselves into what they want to be. Mm -hmm. I think she would be a great online influencer. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, coming back to your previous work, because you uh, were a lead designer on uh, Vampire the Masquerade's uh, Anarx, and uh, then you worked also on the Camarilla source book, and of course you wrote those passages of Victoria that was describing um, various different clans from her perspective. And I did get a lot of questions before uh, this interview from fans about. Uh, what would you, what would Victoria think about other clans which were not included in the Camarilla book? So um, let me start maybe by asking you about La Sombra. What do you think she would say about La Sombra? Well, like before I answer that, I'm just gonna say uh, the moment the moment you need somebody to write Victoria Ash's guide to romancing the clans, 
I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> Brand team. <laughs> will, I'm calling everyone for an emergency <laughs> meeting. It's important. <laughs> yes. Ah, the, but the La Sombra, I think the La Sombra are interesting because on the surface, we would think that the La Sombra are, are a great romanceable clan. Mm -hmm. They are dashing, mysterious, dangerous, exciting. But I think there is a little trap there from mm -hmm. a kind of a Victoria perspective, which is if you are a powerful vampire, if you are a powerful older vampire, is it really you or your influence that the La Sombra is trying to romance? Yeah. And that is a terrible situation. In fact, unacceptable situation. So I think the only way to really get on with the La Sombra is to pretend that you are some hapless neonate who knows nothing and is connect not connected to anything, mm -hmm. which is also funny on its own sake when you are absolutely not that thing. Exactly. And um, now, uh, I guess, a little bit more uh, difficult to climb to romance, I would assume, but maybe not. Uh, what would you s she say about Tsimitsi? Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't think that Tsimitsi are difficult at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that I think they are just just a solid good time. Mm. Because the thing is that if you have accumulated a lot of life experience or unlife experience and you have seen a lot of things that happen, maybe you get a little bit jaded. You have seen so many things, you have experienced everything 10, 20, 100 times. But the great thing about the Chimiche is that they can uh, they can always surprise. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I was always, you know, wondering whether they will be very possessive in relationships because of their horror, you know, dragon aspect of uh, yes, I'm going to, um, to 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 own you and control you and change you to my <laughs> to my willing. <laughs> That's yeah. That I I think that is definitely part of their appeal, and uh, like the way the way I would go at this from a from Victoria's perspective is that that sort of thing is fun to play with for a while. Yeah. For a while. And then <laughs> there might be a point where you feel that, okay, now you have experienced all the, all there is to be done with this. And that's the point when you leave, which may be a surprise to the Jimmy's at that point. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> If they might have uh, understood the thing to be a little bit deeper than it was, but uh, that's how it goes. Or maybe the Chimis is very, uh, very well aware of how these kind of games with power and uh, sex and attraction go. Mm. Who knows? Who knows? Particular Tsumitsu that would be very interesting. But last but not least, I'm not going to go here into all clans because I'm, we still need to save some material for that romance book. <laughs> uh, but. Um, I am wondering, um, they are, you know, for plenty of our fans, they're a fan favorite currently. Um, Clan Hekata, the family of death, the Giovanni Nagaraja, and all of these uh, bloodlines forming a family that seem to be interested in nothing else but death. Can they be romanceable from Victoria's perspective? What would you think? Aha! Uh -huh. Totally yes. <laughs> because the thing is that... Uh... You might think that uh, that uh, that this clan, the the Hekata, that it's um, like how how sexy can things be in a catacomb? Like like <laughs> possibly very, but uh, but like if everybody's with their heads in the books, with their mind in the afterlife, like with ghosts and stuff like this. I mean, come on! But that is exactly I think what makes it attractive because it's a challenge. Yes. It means that uh, it means that you have to bring your A game to this thing <laughs> and really make sure that uh, that all thoughts of necromancy <laughs> will be forgotten as long as this romance lasts because it's so much better you to, need do, to... <laughs> be doing this right now. I, I brought a very valuable lesson from this interview. You need to bring your A game into a date in the mausoleum. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But coming back to, to LARPs very quickly, I uh, see we have a lot of people here in the chat that are thinking about, for example, going to Saturnalia, which is going to be a LARP that is going to uh, base on, on, on the, the book and uh, is mentioned in the Kickstarter campaign. Um, would you give any advice to people who are going to their very first LARP and never LARPed in the past? Uh... 
of course different larps are different uh, uh, work very differently but uh but i think that it's it's like there's two things one is to just think about like what what do you want to experience like what do you think would be cool mm -hmm. like just really and and not what other people think would be cool what you would really like to do and because uh, that can be that can be something really simple and then uh, now comes the second piece of advice you might want to tell other people about that because that makes it so much more likely that it will actually happen because mm -hmm. uh, i think that uh, one way to look at what a LARP is, is that uh, we all have things that we enjoy doing, uh, especially in the fictional framework of a LARP. And uh, since we are all there, we can all make those things come true for each other, which is a lovely, beautiful thing yes. <laughs> think, to happen in a LARP. And uh, especially since it's so different, like what kind of things people are interested in and what kind of things they think would be cool to play or interesting to play or emotional to play. And you sometimes don't even guess like what those things could be. But uh, but I have seen many times that when people really get to do things that they want to do, uh, it brings so much energy to the LARP and to the whole experience for everybody. It's a wonderful thing. That's that's a great advice, and uh, uh, I definitely you know uh, see this happening with a lot of role players out there. That uh, uh, let's be honest, a lot of us are just geeks, nerds, people that stay at home and like to read our books and stay within our safe space and safe zone. Um, and then we go out to either, of course, LARPs or even role play online, and we become these different creatures. Even um, is there any advice that you would give to break? out of the shell maybe do you think that there's something that uh, people people who never did that before um could get as an inspiration in order to just break free and to be whoever they would like like to be in the role play well i think the kind of the first thing is that everybody everybody feels a little bit anxious <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I feel anxious when i go to a larp and i've been doing this for like 25 years but i still get that sort of like ah oh, mm -hmm. maybe maybe nobody likes me <laughs> that's very human that's very human and uh i, I think it helps when you figure out that, that this is uh we're we all there <laughs> in fact we've all been there <laughs> yeah as an as an organizer and just as a designer just when we make larp it helps a lot if the larp has like uh, workshops and uh and these preparatory things before the LARP, where we collectively try to bring bring out everybody, so that uh, people kind of internalize that fact that the people around them will support them in what they want to do, and that's also I think like uh, another reason why it's good to like ask ask things <laughs> from people, just the things that that make your LARP work. I, I don't mean any big. I don't. That doesn't have to be big things. Mm -hmm. I think the most obvious example of like how this works is that if I play the prince and everybody just refuses to accept that, they just don't care, then I'm not the prince. Yeah. I'm just some guy. <laughs> <laughs> but if on the other hand, I go to the LARP and before the LARP starts, I, I say that, you know, I'm a little bit like uh, anxious about playing the prince because I'm not sure if I can pull it off. So could you play me up? Mm -hmm. Could you play me up? And then uh, after 10 minutes of other people making me the prince i will feel like the prince <laughs> <laughs> it's like having larp wingmen <laughs> yeah but but we should all be those wingmen for each other that's wonderful we should, we should all that's what we should make a web of wingmen <laughs> web of wingmen <laughs> I love it. That's great. Um, yeah. So uh, just, you know, a, a final question before we, we lead to where we can find you online. I want to talk a little bit more about this digital online aspect, because nowadays we live in a day where in a in an era where not a lot of people meet to role play in real life anymore. Uh, we have Discord. We have uh, a lot of uh, other uh, ways to do it digitally. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how War of Ages touches upon that? And what do you observe as a role player yourself in the intern in the online zone of role playing? Yeah, uh, like obviously this type of like digital play has developed enormously mm -hmm. during the pandemic, like just massive development. And e even now, 
you, you can just see like things the game is getting better so fast uh, new ideas growing up just uh, super cool things are happening so that's why we felt that it was uh, necessary to have that in the book also i'm not like that's one of the sections i'm not writing personally for war of ages because i'm not the I'm not the best person. I'm not the expert on that. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, we do have somebody who is an expert on that, <laughs> writing that, writing that, writing that material. So, uh, so hopefully it will be. Hopefully it will be good stuff. I can't wait to to read more about it. And in the meantime, uh, Johanna, can you tell us uh, where we can find you online and uh, where people can uh, get more um, of your writing and uh, and see what you do? Maybe even besides from Vampire and World of Darkness. Yeah, I've done a lot of stuff apart from World of Darkness of and Vampire <laughs> as well. Uh, there's a like a. I don't know. When you get older, there's just so much backstory. <laughs> I guess that I, I used to be a TV producer for a, for a while there and uh, stuff like this. But uh, but I have a website which is firstnamelastname.com. <laughs> so not that not that difficult. No dot between. And then I'm on Twitter also. Uh, I think you will find me also just by searching for my name. Yes, I uh, checked that for sure. <laughs> But conveniently, I, I made a Finnish language Twitter handle, Juhana on Paras, which might be a little bit difficult for anybody who does not speak Finnish. Uh, I mean, I would love to learn Finnish one day, so I definitely want to read more of you, uh, maybe in your native language, and, and get some, uh, some of that wonderful language um, engraved in my brain. Uh, but in the meantime, Johanna, congratulations on uh, being a writer for an extremely successful product so far on the Kickstarter. We'll see how it's going to go uh, up until the end of uh, campaign. If anyone here listening to us is interested, there's going to be a link down below the video, which we're going to post uh, uh, to, to lead you to the campaign. And thank you so much for joining me today, Johanna. Thank you for having me. It was great. Thank you. It was really, really fun. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye. And for the next portion of, your, of our news, we're going to talk about another very special guest who is going to join us uh, uh, just this week for LA by Night, and that is Matthew Mercer, uh, the very known storyteller from Critical Role and uh, the role player, and of course, uh, a wonderful, wonderful person uh, that Matthew is, is going to join us as Beckett, uh, which you, of course, may remember from Vampire the Masquerade, The Bloodlines 1, or from Beckett's Jihad Diary, or from a lot of other uh, places and books and creations in World of Darkness which mentioned him. Matthew Mercer joins us for this episode, episode 8, and um, yeah, I guess it's time to maybe show you a little glimpse on that. Let's do it. But your friends might need you. Hit him with the gas. No! Your friends are monsters! And if you're looking for even more role playing with amazing role players and a super awesome great storyteller that I personally love, uh, do check out Extra Credits that, who have done a special Vampire Day slash night to celebrate both Vampire the Masquerade and Month of Darkness. Just yesterday um, on their Twitch channel you are able to find the VOD of their one shot being led by that bronze girl Jasmine Bular. Uh, and it's lovely, there's uh, a lot of action going on and uh, the role players that you may know from either extra credits or friends and um, yeah it's uh, available right now on their twitch for sure and might also be available in the future on their youtube but as for now you can find it at twitch.tv slash extra credits i hope you will enjoy this one 
As for another news, Storyteller's Vault is now officially open for Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition, and that's big news, because that means you are now able to purchase over 39, 39 as I've checked of this morning, but it probably can be a bigger number right now, books, supplements, tools, art collections made by the community members specifically for Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition, and um, get them in, at your table. There's a lot of uh, conversions, there's a lot of uh, adaptations, there and uh, things to enhance your table. Um, there's a lot of content for people who are used more to the Legacy World of Darkness and wanted to see some more concepts from Legacy World of Darkness being uh, pushed into the Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition. There are alternatives to Sabbat, for example, if you uh, checked out our Vampire the Masquerade uh, uh, Sabbat. Um, basically, it, by the way, if you're here, my baby right now, I'm super sorry. <laughs> My microphone might be crap, but uh, daddy is taking care of her and there's like a, a child situation, sire child situation going on. I hope it doesn't uh, bother you. Uh, but uh, there's plenty of Sabbat conversions uh, that um, show an alternatives to the uh, Sword of Cain to the 5th edition. Um, there's also a very interesting um, book, I believe it's the Power Slaves right now, which you can see here on the screenshot, which my friend who plays uh, Tremere told me that has tons of very interesting uh, Tremere rituals and blood magic rituals that you can use at your table. So I absolutely recommend you to check it out. We are going to um, dwell deeper into the Storyteller's Vault in the next upcoming weeks with more spotlights, where we're going to show you some of the most fun creations that we find in there. And uh, you can, of course, join the, the crew as well. If you have ever done any homebrews, if you've ever done any writing, if you want to write your own Vampire the Masquerade novel, maybe make a comic book, maybe do some art. Feel free to join. There are guidelines available on the website. You can sell your uh, official Vampire the Masquerade, uh, your <laughs> fan mates, unofficial, let's say, uh, uh, Vampire the Masquerade materials, but using all of our um, official terms and uh, using our clans and using the concept that you know from our official books. You can uh, make your own stuff from that and sell it on the website or give it out for free, um, depending on what you prefer. I really recommend to check it out and uh, I cannot wait to see what more do you prepare. You can, of course, also join our special Dark Pack server. I will link it down below the video in which you can find um, tons of other Twitter's Vault creators to help you in your creations. Uh, there are layouts available, there are art assets uh, available for free, so you don't have to do it all yourself, you can just focus on writing and use what we uh, give you for free to make these. So yeah, enjoy! And for the next piece of news, if you've missed that, we do have a VOD on our Twitch channel for the special one shot, how to make your one shot panel uh, that was organized by our community ambassador, Hadi. Thank you so much, Hadi, for doing this. I love the energy in the stream and it was super fun to listen to everyone's perspectives on how to make your own one shots. What exactly is a one shot? It's uh, basically a single role playing story all uh, contained into a single seating, let's say. So you can meet with your friends for just one a night and make a full Vampire the Masquerade story for them. We don't really have uh, that much time these days maybe for uh, full-blown chronicles. I very am happy for people that still have the time to, to do this and to go even sometimes years into their chronicles and campaigns. Uh, but uh, because of the time constraints or pandemic or other issues, uh, people may not be able to organize these uh, big stories anymore. And uh, with that, one shots come in handy. You can just sit at the table and uh, enjoy a very contained short story. Uh, but it does require some additional planning and making sure that you are able to pull it off in a, in a one shot. Um, there were a lot of things discussed. The one particular thing discussed is even when scoping gets a little bit too difficult and the one shot goes uh, up to eight hours long, <laughs> which did happen to one of the guests. But um, you can listen about more from Blake Howard, who is our author of uh, uh, Winter Steve and Crimson Fall comics. He also story told the special LA by Night session uh, that um, joined LA by Night lore with Winter Steve. Uh, Rina, who is a really cool lore player that you can check out um, on YouTube by the Uwuverlord. Uh, nickname uh, Joe, who also organized the one shots, and Josh, who you may know from, for example, Stitch of Fate. Um, he also does a really cool job as a storyteller. So I really recommend you to ch check it out because it's a really cool panel and it's available as a VOD right now. It's going to be available on YouTube this weekend. 
And the last piece of update for today, um, we do share some things for free, as you might <laughs> may have noticed for this month. Uh, we're celebrating Month of Darkness with the community by, of course, asking you what would you like to get from us and what would, would, would be awesome to for us to share. And one of the things that we've heard pretty often from our Dark Pack and Storytellers Vault creators is that there was no official source of World of Darkness and Vampire the Masquerade symbols, for example, all clan symbols, discipline symbols, clan typography, and more. So we've decided that, hey, we have these things, we can prepare a pack for you and share it for you with you for free. And right now it's available on uh, worldofdarkness.com slash account. Uh, you're able to download it for free right next to the Sabbat preview, companion, and other things we're sharing there. So yeah, if you ever wanted to use any of our official logos in your video streams, that's totally fine by the Dark Pack agreement. Uh, check out uh, all of the Dark Pack uh, um, paragraphs and everything that is there to make sure that it's super cool with us to, to make your content on our website. Uh, but of, of course, you can use these logos to uh, show your favorite clan on your avatar, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and um, basically flaunt your colors. Uh, we are completely okay with that. You are able to use these logos this way too. So um, yeah, if you want the logos in vectors or in PNGs, we've shared them all in a handy pack. So uh, go to worldofdarkness.com slash account to download them today. And in the meantime, I will be joining a meeting with Hadi to see what is happening with the family this week. Uh, how, is, uh, how is it going with the uh with the uh, vamptober and uh, family creations because i've heard that people are doing a lot of really fun things let me join the meeting very quickly and see if hadi is there hello hello hadi are you there i am let me quickly show you to everyone in our community okay right and now i need to very quickly show everyone uh, the family spotlight, which they cannot see just yet, but they will be able to see it right now. Did it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what do we have here today? A lot. A lot. <laughs> As always. As always. <laughs> Every week the family makes it harder and harder to pick stuff. Uh, I, I am happy that my weird doodle of a vampire is there since the very first time we did it. I would never remove that. <laughs> never. I love that too much. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's go to day 14. And I already see what you put in there and I'm going to melt again. Thank you so much, Hadi. Um, no, Andre. thank Andrea Lor Leora for making this so yeah. beautiful. <sighs> Every rose has its thorns. Uh, every rose has its thorn, just like night has its dawn. Every tear bears some pain, just like a scar varies to stain. <laughs> I love it. You know what I love about this picture the, the most? I didn't notice it at first when I saw it. Uh, it took me a while, but the withered roses behind him are just... They add this um, backstory to it, which I think is, is actually super sad. I know. Kadir... I can't express my like disappointment that you couldn't romance Kadir mm -hmm. in Coteries of New York. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I love Kadir so much. It's such an amazing character. I, I can actually say something here now, um, which is going to be, a, a, I guess, a little bit of a spoiler for one of the next days of uh, Month of Darkness. But, <laughs> but, and you don't know it yet, Tadi. But I don't. No, you don't know that yet. Um, so I did talk to Draw Distance about including them in this Month of Darkness, and we are going to have a Draw Distance day in which we're going to do a little celebration with a lot of fun stuff shared with the community. But one thing they shared with me, which is going to be shared with you soon, is okay. a very early concept art of Kadir, in which he had a different haircut. <laughs> okay, I was... <laughs> I was like, Kadir merchandise, finally. <laughs> no, it's like a very early look at Kadir and he looked different and he looked kind of sexy too. Like mm. there's just no way for him to, to not look attractive. But anyway, I love Someone it. Someone in the chat says, poor Mets fans. I would love art of Kadir wearing. I think he's, I can't remember if he's a Yankees or a Mets fan, but I would love him wearing a jersey or something. That would be really fun, or actually. A baseball hat. We should ask the distance to make this artwork, <laughs> definitely. Okay, uh, wonderful. I, I love this artwork and I love um, a, a lot of things that Andrea Laura is, is, is doing because there's so mm -hmm. many wonderful Vampire the Masquerade. They absolutely kill it every Drawings, single yeah. day. Yeah, and it's, uh, yeah, they are doing basically all of the Vamptober prompts and all of them all of this quality, which is great. Yeah. Just what? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, oh, and then we have Kość w Eterze, which is a, a Polish community member. Mm -hmm. Which I was going to ask you to say their name. They tagged me in their story, and um, 
uh, yeah, you so can read it if you want. Or of, of course, yeah. Just I'm just gonna say very quickly. Koshif Ateja means either a bone in the ether or a dice in the ether, because for some weird reason in Poland we use the same word for a dice and a bone. Not sure why. That doesn't seem weird to me. But <laughs> Is it the same in German? <laughs> no, it's not, but that doesn't seem weird to me. Okay, anyway, please do read. <clears throat> Every rose has its thorns. I walk alone, often beautiful, more often seductive. I want them to look, to gawk at me and my vulnerable self. They say I'm pretty, I'm lost, I'm in good hands now. But what they don't know is that every rose has its thorns and their veins just got pricked. Aww, that's pretty. Ah, uh, good job, Kosh. Uh, it, it, it's really, really nice. Uh, also, mm -hmm. I, I recommend if you are um, Polish, if there are any Polish people watching this right now, Kosh Vetaja is actually sharing um, a lot of um, updates uh, and other things about Vampire Masquerade in Poland. I, I checked the... I, I'm, I think there's a, actually a Facebook uh, fan page in which you can find that. So yeah, do search for Kosh Vetaja because there's a lot of really fun World of Darkness content there. Mm -hmm. All right, and day 15, Blue Blood. Mm -hmm. So we have um, a little cosplay here from Luna Lapine. And um, it says, my guests were beginning to get restless. Eleanor, I called out, do fetch something of a good vintage from the cellar, won't you? Minutes later, we were all enjoying a freshly tapped CTO. The festivities had been saved. <laughs> so apparently she had a basement full of executives. <laughs> nice. Um, I mean, not only does she have a basement full of executives, but also she has a really stunning dress, which I need. Yeah, it's a spider web dress. I need it. And it also looks it's amazing. It looks so, so comfy, too. Uh, I, I, I just I want it. <laughs> also, whatever she has in her glass is definitely not wine. I know it's like, um, yeah, it's supposed to be blood, but I'm thinking if it's a real blood because it looks like real blood. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely looks like coagulated blood. It looks like uh, that uh, out of a blood bag as opposed to out of freshly out of the vein. Yeah, I love it. And I've seen a lot of people doing cosplay for Vamptober and it's just mm -hmm. a pleasure to see because it's awesome. <laughs> All right. And we have one of my favorite TikTokers. Mm -hmm. uh, I get, there's two TikToks. I replaced the music for both. <laughs> I love you. Okay, let's do it very quickly. Let's check it out. In a world of locked rooms, the man with the key is king. And honey, you should see me in a crown. Hello. Love it. Love it. Uh, I've, uh, I assume that there were plenty of these um, transformation uh, TikToks for Blue Blood especially, right? Mm -hmm. mm. The, the, the TikTok community has been just every day, but most of the stuff I can't even put on here. I just try and find something like I can manipulate this enough that I can put it on here. Yeah, that's that's unfortunately a pain because if we put an, an the copyrighted music here, um, it both mutes the VOD and also mutes the YouTube video. So we would yeah. have to cut these parts and we don't want to, um, uh, you know, m make it an issue for, for people to watch these. So that's why exactly. we have to unfortunately uh, cut it. But, um, oh yeah, I'm going to go quickly here to the right to show mm -hmm. something I've pasted in there. Um, uh, I am just super happy to see people putting the palettes in use. Um, this mm -hmm. week we've shared uh, Vampire the Masquerade's uh, color mood boards, um, which are basically colors for each of the clans. They are all of them, you can see them on our website, but you can also wait for them slowly appearing on our Instagram, where we were sharing them. And um, they are not supposed to be the guidelines for each clan on what kind of colors they should be portrayed in, of course. They can be, you know, portrayed in any colors, but they are supposed to invoke a mood, invoke a theme of a particular clan. And this one is a Torreader, and I love how they use mm -hmm. um, the, the, the colors to draw it. It's so beautiful. It looks like a very, a very holy, like a true faith Torreador. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I really want to learn a little bit more about the backstory. When you're a tortured artist, but in the pink scale. <laughs> I love it. It's so cool. All right, let's go to day 16. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I really, really, this is by Ogoff Arts. I really like this one because immediately it reminded me of Erica Ishii, plays mm -hmm. Annabelle in LA by Night, yeah. because they play the violin. And... Um, I don't know. It it just it, it made me immediately made me think of a scene of Annabelle crying and playing the I know Annabelle doesn't play the violin in the show, at least not that we've ever seen, but it's just immediately what 
I saw when I looked at it. It is actually very on brand and on topic because uh, Erika posted recently um, a, a video from her visiting a music store in which she fell in love with uh, with a violin. Uh, not sure if you've seen that. It was it was a wonderful video, very touching. Um, but uh, I love the description here. Crimson tears. She was chopping onions before playing the violin. So don't worry. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I wonder if vampires cry blood when they chop onions. I don't know. What's the science there? It depends if their tear ducts work or not. Like, I guess their tear ducts work, so... They do work, but would they, <laughs> uh, their eyes be... Because eyes get agitated from the, uh, you know, fr from, the, from the onion acid, right? Yeah. So, so that's why you cry. Maybe you get superficial damage. Like, if you cut maybe. onions very closely, maybe you get, like, one point of superficial damage. I would, I would say so. I mean, they're affected by darkness and stuff, you know, some of them, so... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Why maybe. Not? Who knows? <laughs> All right. And the next one. Mm -hmm. Let me play it. Check it out. That looks so good. Like the, the last shot in here could, mm. could be easily used as a photo in like V5 That's Corbett what I or thought, something. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly it's so what I thought. Good, it's such a good cosplay. I love it. Uh, do we know more about the character of Tutu Who? Well, um, no, but Tutu Who has been doing just about every day of Vamptober, mm -hmm. um, and most of their things involve like a combination of like something from a television show or you know some sort of sound bite and things. But this was sort of the first one where I could just take it and put music behind it. Yeah. Um, because they do. I'm not sure what their character is, but they've been doing every prompt, and it's been really fantastic. That's awesome. I, I would love to check out more. If you folks want to check out more too, check out Tutu Who on um, TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. And day 17. I thought you would really like this one. And I think you'll know why once you read it. <gasps> I want to show you something. <laughs> ah, of course. <laughs> like everyone knows this line. <laughs> read the, read the, the text behind the last panel. Uh, if you can. Ours. Mm -hmm. The moon Dancing. is melting. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, this is absolutely a Bloodlines callout and I love it. And it's mm -hmm. bringing me all the nostalgia. Also, the eyes are perfect. And mm -hmm. I mean, even though I didn't see the um, the description, I would uh, like say, I know who it is yeah. <laughs> from, from Bloodlines. The night you were turned. Uh, this is so nice. Also, mm -hmm. it's an iconic scene. You know, it, it's been how many years right now? Six, oh um, boy 15 it's, years yep. 15 years uh and i still a just, little bit more yeah and i ever I, I could like if you told me to tell you scene by scene how this uh, whole introduction looked like i could tell you i could recite it you know? <laughs> yeah the, oh yeah one thing i don't remember what was the hour on the clock um was it 3 a.m it was 3 a.m 3 a.m there we go <laughs> i called it <laughs> so yeah it, it's wonderful blighted elf great job Mm -hmm. And next one. We have another little story here. Mm -hmm. The night you return. Do you want to read it or shall I? You you should do that. I love your voice. <laughs> okay. I love listening to you read. Just read to me, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make you an audiobook of something. Yes, please. Um, this is by Jacques Morales or Stains for Days, which is a great username. Um, it was a dark and stormy night. Good evening, little ones. I'm glad these lectures have gotten back to their full attend attendance. Now, without further delay, it was a dark and stormy night. The rain fell in torrents, except at occasional intervals. I almost had some of you there. It was Italy. The night was clear, calm, and you could see the stars. If you were far enough away from the explosion, that is. I wasn't that lucky until I would regain my senses after the fact. It was a very active night. Someone had let off a stray bullet or a spell or something of that effect. It had quickly escalated into a chaotic mess by the time we, myself, and Kobel mates had stirred and gotten ready. And that's how it remained for a long time. Then my first coherent thought after my embrace was how beautiful the darkness was. I could see the lights of the fight I had been a part of still raging, but it didn't seem to matter much to me anymore. Venus was bright in the sky with bright stars around it as a calming wind would go past me. It was a true sight to behold. Beauty amidst, amidst chaos. The fucking roses loved it. Wow. <laughs> I just like the way it ended. Uh, it, it ended very, very well, but also it, it gave me this thought, 
You know, because we always, when we think about Embrace, uh, the very first thing that comes to mind in roleplay is just hunger. You're super mm-hmm. hungry. You got to feed now. There's some hunger frenzy going on. But, you know, judging by how powerful the Curse of Cain is, if you are afflicted by this curse, of course, I wonder if the first thing that would get, get like, awake in you would be hunger or the curse. <laughs> Hmm. It's a, that's a very interesting thought, you know, if you're a Torator, would the first thing you feel, would, would it be a super huge hunger or a momentary obsession? That's like a which came first, the chicken or the egg. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. <type of> question. <laughs> that, that's that's uh, the kind of that, a question. That gave me, gave me very Sabat Toreador vibes, mm-hmm. that, that particular story. Yeah, really, really good. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you, Jacques, James, for... For your uh, story. And day 18, hunger. Speaking of hunger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this one is by Jason Makes Art. Mm-hmm. And that Jason um, Carl, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jason Carl makes art. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, this one, it says that this is a gangrel in Frenzy based mm-hmm. on the, the little hashtags. But I got, when I first saw it, before I read the hashtags, I was like, oh, this looks like a Nosferatu with protein. See, this has, is because um, everyone thinks claws. that Nosferatu have pointy ears, which is not a thing. <laughs> but I like my Nosferatu with pointy ears. If I played a Nosferatu, I would ask for pointy ears. I mean, you can get gangrel of pointy ears too. There's nothing stopping you. Like, no. There we but go. That's just where my mind went to first. I'm guilty. You're you're so guilty of the pointy ears and bow heads. <laughs> I I love that. I love that aesthetic. I, I do love it too. You know, like I I absolutely um enjoy seeing people going different ways in how they portray Nosferatu and how they draw Nosferatu. But I understand that there's going to be always this um, mindset of the community that Nosferatu should have both heads and pointy ears, which is okay. It's fine. I, I have nothing against it. I would never force a player to have a bald head and pointy ears, but my NPCs mm-hmm. definitely do. Yeah, I think that's a good a good way to put it. Like, definitely do not force your players to do so because it's no. not a law. It's not <laughs> It's not something that we should do. But uh, if when it comes to you your own uh, portrayal of an Nosferatu. Totally, you, you can do that. Mm-hmm. And let's go to Paint Lady. Oh, wow. This one I thought was really powerful. It's never enough. It always wants more. Oh. Yeah, because, you know, blood bags, that's why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just try <Exactly>. real thing. <laughs> the first thing I thought of was like, oh no, this is someone whose potence has risen and now blood bags just aren't enough anymore. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, give you a little little secret in here. Um, oh. Haven't told you that yet, but I'm actually building my very first Finbot character currently, which I, I plan to uh, play in the future. But um, basically, I've been looking through Winter's Thief and the rituals, which are mm-hmm. uh, there, because, you know, I, I knew that there were rituals for, for Finbot alchemy, not, not rituals, sorry, um, the Finbot alchemy uh, um, uh, recipes, let's say. And one of them that I found really, like, creeped me out. It was a ritual that, uh, it was an alchemy that uh, makes uh, for one night, if successful, a vampire cannot be sated in any way. If he drinks blood, which is Mm -hmm. infused with this. So no matter what you do, even if you drink human dry, you're going to feel this irresistible hunger of you are empty, you need to drink. And it's so creepy. And just imagine how powerful Fimbots are these days. And imagine that compared with Path of Sun. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, I take all of that and then put them in the Sabbat. And that's the scariest enemy I could think of. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely know. I, I know we have a plenty of uh, Fimbot alchemy um, recipes currently with the core book, with the additional books, with Codes of the Blood Gods and with uh, Winter Steep. But I, I want more. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I really... I love to see, see more no, of that. They're so good yeah. and yeah. so, so scary. <laughs> they are. Pain Lady, really good job. I, I love this. It, it looks really wonderful. And now, day 19. I think you should read this one. Okay. From Ismail. We will never know the meaning of satiation. We are always hungry and restless for blood, for knowledge about the secrets of the blood. Only when we unravel all the mysteries, we will be satisfied but only until next night. Tremere! Super true. <laughs> very Tremere. Very, very mm-hmm. Tremere. Yeah. Um, and I might also be almost done with a Tremere, which I plan to play soon, but I'm not going to say when. 
but uh, yeah. I wouldn't know anything about it. Yeah, I, th I'm just going to spill some beans that I am planning to play a Tremere soon, which is kind of funny because I am always making fun of Tremere, but here I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tremere are actually really cool. I might joke about them, but to be honest, they were my favorite clan for a majority of my Vampire the Masquerade experience, so yeah. Love it. We all knew you were a secret Tremere. I was a secret Tremere back in the days, okay? I, I kind of broke You protest that. too much. But that's Bruja! <laughs> that's, that would make me Bruja! Yeah, sure. Yeah. Anyway, oh, the next one is also great. Uh, mm -hmm. Wow. So I just, cool. I really love the visual of this one. And of course, it's a Nosferatu with a bald head and pointy ears, so. Yeah, Rio or Hero, a very good job. I mean, they're not bald, I guess. Or is it? I mean, I guess, yeah, I they are bald. Veins. That's veins, you're right. They are bald. Okay, anyway. <laughs> I'm just going to agree with the fact that all Nosferatu have to be bald, have pointy ears, and super long nails, because that's also yeah. a lot. <laughs> all mine in my stories do, but that's just me. Hadi. <laughs> anyway, uh, day 20, Last Sunset. I thought you would really like this. Because I, I think you have you you like the Hikata a lot. Mm -hmm. I've heard you talk about them a lot. Yeah. And this is a, a little Hikata um comic book. You remember your manners. Speak when spoken to, use all the yes sirs and thank yous you got left. Got it? Yeah, granddad. Good kid. Tonight's very important for the whole family. I know you'll do well. Your dad would have been so proud of you, Senzo. I want you to know that. I want you to remember that. Wherever you go after tonight, you will take our family with you. Wow. Yeah. And that's from the art block. And uh, I, I didn't include all the little tags that they put in there, but it's very much, they did put a little description uh, saying that, you know, it's like a, a being embraced into the Giovanni family. Yeah. You know, what that means and how that important it is and things like that. That's really cool. I would love to mm -hmm. to read the whole comic like this. Like I I, I would too. Hey, at the art block if you're making more <laughs> <laughs> You know where we are. Um, tag me. Tag, uh, tag me. me, tag me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joni Art, the last sound said. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And I I think this might be Seattle because it looks like the space needle, but I'm not sure. It could be somewhere in Canada as well, but I'm not sure. I'm actually going to very quickly throw another one here at the last sunset, uh, if mm -hmm. I can, because I just saw it today. And I guess another one from Andrea, actually. So it's something that uh, um, we, we covered that artist before uh, up there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Where was v Way at the top, the Kadir one. Uh, oh, the Kadir one. Oh, wait. The Kadir. Oh, here it is. Okay, it disappeared from me. And I'm going to paste it there. Can I paste it like this? Oh, it loads. It's a big thing that loads. It, okay, we're going to go back to it. But uh, in the meantime... Okay, I can't see it yet. <laughs> yeah, it, it's loading. We can go to LA by Night. Mm -hmm. Throw some LA by Night oh, art more in of here them, as please. well. Oh. I know, isn't that so sweet? It is sweet. That's oh. a B. Dave Walderson and Nora Ibrahim, obviously. I, I am actually um, feeling all the feels when I see arts like this because, unfortunately, LA by Night is slowly... Uh, wrapping up its season five um, with with the next two episodes, and uh, <laughs> it, it really gives me gives me all the feels. And then yep. we oh we have a lot of portraits by Comedic Neutral Art PH. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, it uh, I didn't include all of the descriptions, but this person recently started watching LA by Night. Mm -hmm. And um, they just fell in love with these characters and decided to draw them. And you can see here, Shane Easton has commented on this one yeah, of, the, of Katya. And I just thought I would screen grab them all and put them up here because I think they're all so incredible. They are really, really cool. Um, I, I would love to uh, see the whole account and see, see other drawings that they did because it looks really, really cool. They, they do. They have, I think they have nines on there and oh. uh, Therese and Jeanette. Great. I definitely mm -hmm. need to check it out. Also, I love um, combining uh, art, uh, the, the clan symbols with the artworks. It always mm -hmm. uh, gives you this fine uh, vibe. But anyway, I'm going to go up here to end the note on this uh, painting uh, by Andrea. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's just so beautiful. It's the last uh, sunset. And it just, it gives me like all the feels that I feel when I am, you know, role play sad. So basically, like for for me, in Vampire the Masquerade, there are just so many of these um, 
nostalgic sad moments of hey I'm a vampire and I'm reminiscing of my past life and how beautiful it was and I will never get to it again and it's a beautiful mm-hmm. tragedy and I feel like somehow with the colors with the atmosphere this painting just shows it so well that they would like to have it on my wall <laughs> the, I mean I, I don't know how Andrea does it I yeah. don't <laughs> every single day guys like literally every yeah. single day of Vamptober Andrea is putting art like this uh, like there, if you so. if you ask me to doodle like just like a little stick figure couldn't yeah. Don't even ask me. No, like I, I, I guess I can draw, but I like I couldn't do quality like this every single day and could keep it up for a month and not get like super burned out uh, in mm-hmm. the process because that's so much work. So Andrea, thank you so much for sharing your art with us because I'm in love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's great. Um, okay, Harry, thank you so much for joining me this week. I really hope to to show even more Vamptober stuff to people next mm-hmm. week. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. And on this uh, very nostalgic and happy note as well, uh, we're going to wrap it up for this week. Thank you so much for joining us for a little bit of a longer episode of uh, Word of Darkness News, but that's of course because we had a really cool guest and a lot of fun stuff to show. Uh, I will be staying in the cozy room for those of you who are watching us live on the stream to answer your questions for a few minutes and for those of you watching us on YouTube. Um, see you later tonight because it's probably Friday right now, and there's going to be an uh, 11 night episode with uh, Matthew Mercer live on Twitch later today. So see you, and um, yeah, next week. Don't get lost tonight. <laughs> Bye.